Hey everybody, Hi Lord Tamerlane bringing you another obscurity in miniature and today we've got a box from Creature Caster and what's in the box? Let's take a look oh, on the other side because they usually label it and we have mechs. Mechs. No, they don't make mechs now. This is the Matriarchs of Ecstasy box set as I try to wiggle the box open. And inside, well, we've got a set of three of the Matriarchs of Ecstasy. The Noble, the Priestess, and the Feral version. So why don't we take a look at what we have in here. So for starters, we actually have four bags instead of three, which is odd because there's only supposed to be three Matriarchs available at the moment. This one I can tell is the Noble. We've got the Sphere. This one looks like oh, shoot if I know okay this one's a priestess and I can tell that because she's got the little smoky parts there so that means this is the feral one so what's in the other bag we have another base which is kind of surprising and we have two chained slaves because what kind of ecstasy driven demon creature would we have if we didn't have slaves to torture and enjoy let me take a look at these guys first. So I'm going to pop these bags open. We'll take a look one by one and see what we've just gotten ourselves into here. First up is the Noble, since she is the most easily identifiable one. And I did manage to get her spear in one part. That's nice because with a delicate thin shaft like this, it always gets me quite worried that it's going to arrive in one piece. So that's going to need a little bit of straightening out, obviously, but that's not a big deal easily fixed we have what looks like so she's supposed to have a cape attached to her cape or a flag attached to one of her limbs but being pleasure demons naturally they have lots and lots of limbs so the stitching on the body looks kind of nice they are topless, so if that's an issue for you, just be aware. I'm sure you can always paint over that, but, you know. Surprisingly and nicely enough, uh, the models themselves are actually already having painted examples available on the Creature Caster website, which were not there when I placed an order, but that is still nice to have some examples with. We have... Things. I don't even know what those are. It looks like hands or something. Hmm. What else is in the box? That's not a box, it's a bag. We've got a interesting looking base. Is that a face? There was a face at one point. And then we have the other leg. Bladed arm and Lots of tentacle hair. Okay. So, these figures are quite large. They're probably about 40 millimeters tall or so. I mean, she's already, with one leg on the ground, is still a good head taller than our Primaris friend, and she absolutely is going to be intimidating our witch hunter human friend. What about the Stormcast? Finally grabbed a Stormcast model I had laying around painted. So, yeah, same thing. They're probably bigger than Demonettes if that's what you're worried about, but I don't know. I'm kind of worried that these used to be horns and that they're all snapped off, but, you know, I can either green stuff it or attempt to put it back together. So I know she wasn't supposed to have any kind of slave on her base, but... Who is this? This was the feral model. I believe she does. Let's see if I can get her out without snapping stuff. Again, pretty good sized model herself. And even though she's got a little detailed base. About the same size as her friend there. I'm not sure what's going on here. If that's a casting issue or what i'm really not sure i'm gonna have to look online maybe she's supposed to have like a spiky thing sticking out now she has a different base that's always nice i like having a variety there parts of something link cloth maybe i really don't know this one's gonna be one i might have to just sit there and stare online for a bit all right what do we have here 
Mmm, stuff stuck in between each other. That's the head. I like the head design, and they look like they'd actually fit in pretty well with some of the Raging Heroes, Lust Elves. I'll have to pop some of those girls out and see. And then more limbs. So we've got a leg, a hooked leg, cloven. If I know how to use English vocabulary correctly, and another scything arm, and finally another scything arm, and thing. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So what? We got an extra three limbs on her. Not bad. Yeah, I think one of those was supposed to be a loincloth somewhere. A little bit of cleanup necessary, but that's just extra flash. That's not too bad. I'm really trying to figure out what this weird appendage thing is right there on near her head. I'm assuming the head's going to go like that. Okay. We'll figure it out. And uh, once I get a chance to put these ladies together, I will mention in my comments... Any thoughts or suggestions on how to get them together? Finally, we have the priestess, and again, totally different base. Got some kind of tentacle relief going on there. I wonder if I stack them all together, they make some kind of display. All right, there's her sensor with all the smoke coming out of it. Looks like there might be two versions of it, in fact. Or maybe she's just carrying a bunch of extra heads. I'm not sure. And bearing in mind that there's probably a hand somewhere that's supposed to go with those slaves that we have to get to. I really like her horns. Of all the ones, I thought she really reminds me of the, was it the Queen of Ecstasy that we have? Whose head tentacle hair things I still have yet to actually attach and is holding me back from painting it because it just looks like such a pain and I don't know how to build it. I probably should do that, shouldn't I? All right, well, she needs some cleanup. Nothing too major. Again, pretty comparable in size. Oops, she's a lot taller than our witch hunter friend. Comparable, possibly to a Stormcast. A bit more lithe. Considering that she's already about the size of our witch hunter friend, or I'm sorry, bigger than our witch hunter friend, probably they're going to be larger than demonettes. So bear that in mind. But the price reflects that too. Bunch of hook blades. Look like something off a dark Eldar kit. She has a cloven hoof as well. Yep. It's a fancy armor. Again, reminding me a lot of the Queen of Ecstasy model that Creature Caster has already put out. You can see in the other videos. I know I have it somewhere. Somewhere in my backlog of hundreds of stuff. And wow, she only has three extra hands. Not bad. The more arms, the merrier. All right, so that is the main three ladies, the matriarchs, if I can find. There we go. We get all three girls in there. I'll snip them all off in a little bit. And then we have their extra little bonus baggie of stuff. And I don't know which one's supposed to come with which one. Pop that open. So again, here we have... Uh, I don't think we saw this base yet, did we? I don't think there's any special labeling as to which base goes with which person. But let's take a look. So we've got a more fantasy looking guy, tattered leathers with the chain around his neck. And then interestingly enough, we have a more sci-fi version. That's kind of interesting. So I guess if you wanted to have these slaves dedicated to one game or another, that might be something to keep in mind. Me personally, with demons, I like to keep them setting agnostic. That's just my personal preference. Hmm, what should I do with them, and what base should I put them on, and why is there an extra chain? I'm not sure. I know the Feral one's supposed to have one, so we're probably going to figure out how everybody goes together, and we'll go from there. So, give me a moment, and I will pause this, and I will be back in just a sec after getting all these ladies put together. 
All right, we got all three of our matriarchs about 95% complete here, and you can see them hanging out with the head of their queen, who, if you're not familiar, is a ridiculously large model. And sadly, I still have not gotten around to painting her, even finishing her, and I really feel bad because it's such a cool model, and I love her crazy limbs and ornate armor and crazy, bizarre, Zeram-ish looking motif going on with all the weird no mask heads all over but anyway we're getting off task sadly none of that kind of design is actually present in the matriarchs here i was a little bit bummed out about that because to me that was one of the kind of defining elements of our queen's design there and we'll just give you guys so i threw a bunch of random marines and gw figures in here because most likely that's what they're going to be fighting on the tabletop all of our matriarchs, as I mentioned earlier, are on 40 millimeter bases, and they're about 40 millimeters tall. You can see they're a good head or two taller than all of their marine or sigmarine or generic human friends here. So we'll just set them aside. So you got a good sense of scale here. They are nice and big, and they do take up a fair amount of the real estate on the base, but I want to talk about each one in particular. I'm going to start with the noble here. Get that zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see her better. So you'll notice that she is missing an arm currently, and that's just because once it's glued on, it's really, really close to the body, and I actually shouldn't say arm. There's actually two arms there. All of our models have multiple limbs, which is a big plus for me. And I did manage to find that piece, and I did a terrible job of trying to glue it on again, and so I'm going to green stuff it back later. I'll just glue this arm on when all is said and done. So she's a bit static in terms of pose. I'd say she was the simplest of the models to build other than the fact that her hand consisted of three parts. But for the most part, everything fit really clean. It was fairly obvious where everything went. Like her hair just kind of attached nice and snug on the body. No real worries there. We'll set her aside and then we'll grab our feral matriarch. And you'll notice she's got the chain there and a rather empty large spot on her base. So actually, I like her pretty cool. Uh, her head at least reminds me of a bit more of the queen with all of the extra horns and stuff. But again, sadly, we don't have all the crazy no-mask drama going on there. All of them are topless, so hopefully that's not an issue for you. I know some people are weird about that. But the cool thing is she's got one of these little minions. You can kind of just stick the chain like that and... Have him on the base. I think this is her base, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap there, but a little bit of green stuff shoved in there. Should be able to fix that right up. I'm not going to actually glue the little slave to the base. I do appreciate that this long spindly limb is actually kind of attached to the base itself, whereas these ones aren't, but that's not the end of the world. Shouldn't be too much of a challenge to get the paintbrush in there and paint her. Oh, actually, I am missing one part I did not glue on her. I just realized that she has a little cape that is supposed to hang off one of these limbs. I think it's this one, and I was just going to wait until I actually have her all painted and then just do a quick super glue job and call it a day there. Finally, and my favorite, is the priestess. So I think this is her base, or I might have confused it with the slave base. I like the pose. To me, this figure, I almost... It felt like I was building a Raging Heroes figure. The design, and that's not a knock on either company. Uh, to me, that's, that's kind of a compliment. It's definitely its own thing. This is 100% creature caster, but a lot of it, I don't know why. Maybe the way she's kind of strutting there gave me a bit of a Raging Heroes vibe. Nice thing is this sensor that she's got carrying. She actually has an optional version, which was just a kind of a nice touch, where it's not spewing forth poisonous, noxious gas. So... If I can make a small recommendation to everybody as you build her, put this arm right behind the sensor on first because this long one here is going to get in the way. And naturally I did that. I need a little cleanup there as well. Part of the reason I like her, I think, is she's got pretty ornate armor compared to the rest of them. She's a lot more dignified, a lot more horns, and you know, I like all, um, all these extra limbs. She's got a good four limbs there. So... She's just kind of going in every which direction, which I really like. I do have one more part that I need to put on. There's a set of almost dark Eldar-like meat hooks that are going to attach to this bladed scything talon back here. We'll get to those later. I think that's an easy enough one. That it's just going to be kind of a hassle to get in there and paint her, so we'll glue that on later. 
Overall, I'm pretty pleased with these models, but then again, I can't say I've ever been displeased with anything I've got from Creature Caster. Price was fair, about $20 US per model. I think there was a little bit of a discount if you ordered them all together, but I noticed as of me filming this, it's already out of stock in their store, so you might have to wait a little bit. They are quite cool. If I had to pick one, it would definitely be the Priestess here, although the Feral one is giving me... Uh, I keep changing my mind. She was the first one I built, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, but then I saw her. So, my opinions are like the wind and constantly changing, so what do I know? Not to knock the noble herself, she's very dignified and statuesque, and it's kind of a cool looking, you know, almost like a Chinese style blade with the rings and the banners flapping around there. She's also got some pretty fancy armor. So they're all pretty cool in their own way. I definitely would like to see more human-sized stuff like this from Creature Caster. This is kind of a first, as far as I can recall, from Creature Caster itself. Usually they've specialized in big Hulk and monstrosities for the most part. So uh, I wish them luck in hopefully seeing more along this line. My own personal preference. I would love to see some kind of big reptilian monster because everybody and their mom seems to want to jump on the Lizardman bag wagon. But I think what would be kind of cool is nobody's done an update of, like, Skyla Angrifrim or whatever his name is, the big beast of corn that had, like, the brass collar attached to him. I'd love to see some kind of big, crazy, chaos, monkey, King Kong monster. So, Creature Caster dudes, think about it. I think it'd be a cool model. Definitely up their alley with big, crazy monstrosities. But overall... Getting back on track with the Matrix Ecstasy, pretty neat models, definitely worth the price. Uh, honestly and truly, I like these more than the actual GW Slaneshi stuff. I think these are way cooler. But then again, they also have tons and tons of limbs, which is a cool thing for me. Uh, what would you use them as in an actual GW game? I have no idea. I have not touched Slaneshi stuff ever in Warhammer, so... If you got any suggestions on what to use them, stick them in the comments because I'm quite curious. I mean, they're, they look like they'd be bigger than demonettes, but they're kind of small to be fiends. So help me out with that one. Hopefully you guys found this somewhat interesting. Hopefully it was somewhat informative, and hopefully you'll go check out Creature Caster's stuff because they got plenty of other cool models from simple size stuff like this to the big Hulkin monstrosity that is the queen with no head because her hair frightens me in all of its many pieces, but someday I'll get around to it. But that said, this is High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.